Hey guys, Darius here. Welcome to InventBox where the solution is right around the corner. This video is going to be a walkthrough of making this demo using WebGL. Now I am going to be starting off where video 8 ended and that is we just learned how to move the camera around a virtual camera using the view matrix. Now, if you are following along my series, then this will be natural and you'll just use the main.js that we've been working on. If you have just uh, joined me for the demo, then I'll give you a quick rundown of what's going on. We first load in WebGL uh, just using get context and we check to make sure that it is supported then we create a buffer on the GPU that will store all of our vertex positions. We then need to create a shader program. This consists of a vertex shader and a fragment shader. And the source code is right now stored at, in a string. Not ideal for syntax highlighting, but it really does work. We compile the shader program, link it up, and then we retrieve, excuse me, retrieve some data from the shader program, like the position of the uh, or the location of our attributes. We have one attribute that's position because that's what we're going to be piping through our buffer. We will use the program, make sure that depth test is enabled. And then we have a little bit of matrix stuff going on. Uh, if you're familiar with graphics programming, it will be you'll be also familiar with this model view projection. And we have a perspective, 75 degrees, yada yada yada, and a simple animate loop. Okay. And so at this point, if we drew anything on the screen we could rotate it around or move the camera by translating the view matrix. So that's our starting point. I said this was a point cloud demonstration. That's because um, you can create a point cloud pretty easily uh, mathematically, essentially with a big for loop. But um, the point cloud I think is pretty self-explanatory. Essentially you would have a function that will take a few parameters and then output vertices such that if it was given you know a hundred thousand random inputs random data points it would produce a cloud of points that form a certain shape you know like a sphere so we need a function that will take a just random number between 0 and 1 and plot it somewhere on this sphere and then we just do that over and over again and as long as our function is pretty good we'll end up all the points on the sphere now this is the you saw the demo that I had running, but if we go to port 3000, that'll bring up what we actually have. Uh, I am starting on a black screen. I did that with CSS just because I think the points are more visible than if you put them on a white screen. So before we do create that function, we need to know what we're going to be outputting and it's going to be our vertex data and I'm not going to touch the colors. I'm not going to create a custom color for each vertex. In fact, I will just modify the fragment shader so that it will produce a color. Um, oh, here it is. I'll set the color equal to something based on the XY position. And I just set the blue to be one all the time because I think it, it gives it a kind of 
space look. Oh, it's gone now, but you can obviously change the color how you want. So all we're doing is we're implementing a function that outputs this or populates our vertex data. Let's call it, you know, sphere point cloud. And we can vary the number of points. Obviously, the more points you draw, the slower it will run. But if you only draw a couple points, you won't even see your shape at all. So the, the more points, it, the more it'll fill in the shape. We'll just use a for loop to assemble a list. And we'll iterate point count times. And then I need to generate a point using some function and random numbers, you know and then append it. So I'll create a point somehow. Probably using math.random. And push it to our points, but we're actually going to have to flatten it first. And obviously, I'm just kind of writing uh, scratch right now. But what I found to kind of make sense is if you generate um, three random numbers and sort of treat them as x, y, z. They don't have to be x, y, z exactly, but in this case, to create our sphere point cloud, Having three random numbers, three degrees of freedom, is going to uh, make this a lot easier. And the approach that we're going to take is to create a random point in space, calling math.random three times. And I think I'm going to have uh, X, Y, Z that range from negative one half to positive one half, so that the center of the point is at the origin at zero. So you know the X input will say math dot random minus one half, so that it lands right between negative 0.5 and positive 0.5. And then I guess you could just copy this or make a helper function. Sometimes you, if you don't want to repeat yourself, And now I'll create my input point using the R function three times. All right, so you can see the first part of this is really up to you. And you can create point cloud functions for like just about any shape that you can think of as long as you can find a function or a mathematical way to produce it. All right, so we have our input point, which is by nature, 
any value in the x, y, z between negative one half and positive one half. So if we were to push, in fact, maybe we should do that right now. Let's just push input point and see what it looks like, because it should it should kind of create a filled in, you know, volume of a box. And you play around with the number of points. I'm going to put uh, 10,000 in. Oh, let's see. That's probably it. Nice. And maybe I'll even up that number a little. See what, all right, there you go. That's 100,000 points and it's a, uh, looks like a box. And this is random in the X, random in the Y, random in the Z, and so naturally, given enough points, it will fill in that three-dimensional volume and produce a box. What we want to do is constrain all of those points so that they are at a fixed radius from the center. And you can think of each point as, uh, since it's a, if you were to draw a line from the origin to the point, in a sphere, all of the, it, it would be the radius and it would be a fixed distance. So every point in our point cloud needs to have a fixed distance from zero. And the quickest way to do this, or I'm not sure if it's performance quickest, well, but, um, maybe in, in the code-wise code, code -wise quickest or even methodically quickest, we just to normalize the point as if it were a vector, which of course will divide it by its length, resulting in a length of one. And then at that point, you could multiply by some you know, constant radius if you wanted your sphere bigger or smaller. But we'll probably just leave it how it is. So. The vec3.normalize comes from GL matrix, like what we've been using our uh, mat4, 4, 4x4 4 matrices. The input will be a fresh vector of 3. Or sorry, the output is, yeah, the, the way that vec the way that uh, GL matrix works is um, it can be hard to get a grasp. But first, we're going to normalize our input point. So again, this is taking the input point, which would normally create a box, and then we're going to set every point. We're going to divide it by its length um, so that it will be exactly one uh, unit in distance away from the origin, but it will still retain its... Um, it will retain its direction. And that's what we end up with. Now you will notice there's some hot spots, I would call them, where the distribution isn't perfect. In fact, you still see, it looks as if this sphere were really made from a squashed square or, or box. And so the 
edges show up a little brighter as there are more points in those locations but it definitely did produce a sphere and you may be able to play around with other methods of producing you know of restraining them other than normalizing that might produce a mathematically you know evenly distributed point cloud but I'm happy with this and so the demo that I showed you had had a little more interaction and I will leave that up to you you just attach some keyboard listeners and move your camera around and you can do some really interesting things Well, I hope that you were able to follow along no problem. If not, please leave comments um, below and I will get around to that. Thank you for watching. I, my hope is that these demos make the WebGL come to life a little bit more instead of getting just caught up with learning one, one thing after another. We get to put it all together and make something interesting. All right, see you next time.